ಗಣೇಶಾಯನ ಓಂ ಸಗನಾವತು ಸಗನೋಪುನತ್ತು ಸಗವೀರ್ಯಂ ಕರಭಾವಕೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನೀತಮಸ್ಮಾಭಕ್ತಿಶಾವಕ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವೈದಸ್ವತಾಯ ಮೃತ್ಯುವೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ಯಾಚಾರ್ಯ ನಚಿಕೇತ್ ಸರ್ಚ I hope you can hear me well because I am in a difficult position now on the, mo- on the mobile phone. So let's see. So we, we are in the second valley of Kutu Upanishad where the Lord of Death is teaching Nachiketas the Atma Vidya. he is giving very paradoxical statements as we saw in the last one where he is giving the description of atma in mutually exclusive statements we had a uh, two sessions on that so in the 21st and 22nd and 23rd or rather 21st and 22nd, it gives you a little bit more of the Atma. Just to remind, I remind you, when you talk about Atma, you talk about the true nature of oneself. The context comes in because Najiketas asked the question, what happens to one when one dies? I happen to be a part of a ritual for the deceased. And I see that we do a lot of worships, giving food to someone who has passed away. And here we hear about Atma as all-pervading, omnipotent, omniscient, Ishwara. So there is a contradiction. So Emadharma Raja is now trying to pinpoint the question, and the answer to the question that you have to understand jeeva bhavam the confusion of who am i the confusion of realizing that i am the atma so is the ishvara that for mathematically i am the ishvara or ishvara is me tatvamasi you know all that but that is not really sitting comfortably with us because we have jeeva bhavam in the last class i gave an example just an example so we are going to climb this top notch knowledge by step by step so each example is giving you a hold what is example we saw you look at the wall on the wall is visible because there's a light on the wall so when you look at any wall any body any picture you don't see the light you see what reflects light you see the object you take it for granted light is there but you don't see the light but now if i take a mirror and project or reflect the sun's light on the wall the reflected image is a more pristine and luminous on the wall suddenly you will say hey i see a light moving on the wall there's a light on the wall which which makes the wall existing in the consciousness 
we don't recognize that. But an intense little reflection, we can recognize that. You understand the example? Like, you know, you go to the movie, there's a plain screen. The moment the film runs, you recognize the film. Otherwise, it's just a blank screen. So we have to now convert this into these two variables we are going to map. The light that illumines the objects, the light that makes you aware, the light of consciousness, the light that we ignore, is Atman. The light that reflected, the light that borrows the power of Atma to have thoughts, to have speech, to have senses, to have a body, is a reflected consciousness. These, these words are just to give you understanding. We use the word jiva. So that means when you see me, you see this person called Raja is a jiva. Because I say, this is me. This is my body, my shirt, my car. So who am I? I'm referring to. I'm referring to that part of me, which is the ability to think, the ability to speak, the ability to hear, and the ability to build a personality. Child is also able to see. A child has not got the personality yet. That's why we see child as a pure consciousness. We worship a children like God. Because it hasn't got uh, a notion that I am this being. He doesn't have that. So there is in us the two things, the Jiva Bhavam and Atma, the consciousness and the conscious mind. It's not perfect what I'm saying, but it's good enough to hold on to. Consciousness, which we don't really understand, but that's a light, that's the Atma. It is same in everything, everywhere, all pervading. The conscious mind is an embodiment which is illumined by this consciousness and therefore it acts as, as if it has got all senses. You understand? So that is Jiva. So Jiva Atma is the underlying consciousness of the Jiva. Simply Jiva Atma is Atma. Parama Atma is Atma. Atma is the underlying consciousness. So the whole exercise of Vedanta is to make us aware that we are the awareness itself. We are the Chaitanya itself. Kutas the Chaitanya, not the Jiva Bhava. Then the question is, well, I'm born in this world. I have a role to play. So don't I have to say I am the Jiva? Yes, you have to say. But you have to remember, I am performing a role. As a man, as a woman, as an Indian, as a Brit, as a Singaporean, as white, as black, as a husband. And therefore, I have a beginning for this embodiment. I will have an end for this embodiment. This is beginning and the end or birth and death. But this is not for 
the awareness, but the notional identity of the self, the conscious mind are the jiva. So if you are able to realize this and perform as a jiva, underline the word perform, Perform means enacting a role. You, you are not the role. When you perform, you are free. Samsara is not birthless. If you're birthless, then it's nothing there, right? Why is then avatars come? We generally say birth and death. If I am able to be born in anybody, any form, but I am free from all the grief. What is the worry? The trick is to identify with our true nature, which is Atma. Now, going back to the Najiketa's question, if Atma is the solid in the 20th mantra, all pervading, bigger than biggest, smaller than smallest, that means it is everywhere. It has no place to go. If it is everywhere, it is not Atma is in us. We are in Atma. So it is not Atma get peace when somebody dies. Atma is always peace. It is the Jiva that gets the peace. So, if I am not able to recognize the unity of this, and when I carry this conscious mind, chitta pasham, the vasanas propel me to look for another body. Therefore, I transcend this body. There are so many ways we can look into it. Puranas gives you so many meanings. So you transcend this world, go to astral world and all that stuff. And then you take another Janma. It's somewhere, some body. Maybe it's a Devendra, Brahma. I don't know. Or a monkey or a mosquito, a man. That is a Jiva Yatra. So the answer to the Chikeda's question is already clear. Jiva keeps hopping, hopping, hopping. So the liberation is not for the Atma. Why Atma is not chained? It's not Atma Vimochanam. Atma Jnanam means Jiva Vimochanam. Jiva Namsam is Jiva Nasham. I have no more attachment. It is not I when I say I am the Atma. I don't die. Now, the Chikedas haven't hasn't got that yet. So so far, when he's talked about this Atma, in the 21st mantra, he is now giving him an option to understand using a paradoxical statement again, Jiva and Atma. What is saying? Asino duram vidati, chaya no yati sarvataka, kastam madamadam devam, madanyo nyat markati. Asino duram vidati, asina, asina means taking an asana, seated. So it is move, not moving, seated. Duram Prajati. Duram means distance. Prajati means it going. In the sitting, it means you are the Atma. I am Atma. This Atma. Sitting and it is going. Shayana, that means one who is sleeping. Yati Sarvataka. Sarvataka means everywhere. Yati. Yati means it's going. Sleeping, it is going. Now, 
to understand this, you must understand a lot of death is giving educators the Atma and Jiva Bhava, Jiva Atma. The Atma is sitting there. Now I am in Singapore, but I am with you mentally. I am with you in London. I think of uh, each one of you. How is it possible? I, my body is here. Means mind has gone there. My consciousness has gone there. Everything exists because it comes into one's consciousness. If it is not in, if I am not in your consciousness, I am not existing in your world. Saying this, this the sign of how we can discuss it in great detail in, in some other class. We sleep, and then the dream comes in. So I go to, I'm here, I'm going, I'm in Varnasi. Next minute, I'm having a, you know, Ganga Snanam there. How is it possible? Mind goes there. Well, it, you, can, you cannot say it's imagination. Because I can go to Kashi and still don't recognize Kashi. I can be in a class, I can't hear the class because my physically I'm there, my mind is not there. Then I am as well not there. It is a mind that manages the perceptions. The mind that brings knowledge to me. The mind is a gatekeeper of awareness. So, but the mind can go at the same time anywhere. So is it, am I talking about the mind? No, I'm talking about the, the mind embodied reflective consciousness, the conscious mind, the jiva. So he's saying on one end, as an Atma, you are unmoving, but Jiva, you are everywhere. The Atma, you are just as if you are sleeping, but as a Jiva, you are going everywhere. Kastam Matamatam Devam. So, Kastam, you take it as Kaha. Tam, Kaha means that which. That Devam, that Atma is Mada Amadam. Madam Adam. Amadam. Madam means uh, here it madam, madam is not this pride. It is happiness. It's enjoy. So you want you want the same time you are sorrowful, you are happy. Imagine our life, you know, think about our life. Every minute we are happy. Sad. Still, you are free from happiness and sad. So here's he giving you the to contemplate. You know, when you, when you, when you listen to Vedantic uh, thoughts, everything is high sounding. Nice to know I am the Atma, and Atma is all pervading beyond grief and worry. But I worry. Atma is not going anywhere, but I go everywhere. So how do we resolve this contradiction? We resolve the contradiction by realizing that there is a duality in you, which is a jiva bhavam. The reality is atma bodham. So we, we means that is those who follow dvaitam, see the duality is an empirical reality, but not an absolute reality. We, we will discuss it someday. You know, if you need to know everything, the Dvaitis come with, uh, even Dvaita takes it as a learning step. It's called Tattvatrayam. Three things you need to know. The world, Jagat, Ishwara, who makes this world, and the jiva. If you know all these three, you know everything else. So jagat is, we you know, inert. So Loki, science gives you metallurgy, chemistry, biology. You can keep on learning about the world, it will never end. So you realize the world is a means for me to live. 
I don't need to know it anything anymore. It is complicated. It is infinite in that sense. Ishwara is incomprehensible. Therefore, I have to come to know about Jiva. The Tvampada Vicharam. Who are you? I, I keep repeating this because this is the essence of Vedanta. If you do not know who you really are, you achieve nothing in the path of perfection. You will get into samsara. Samsara means tabam. Tabam means grief. So here, madhamadam devam. Now he says, madanyo nyadum arshati. He concludes saying that madanyo madanyo. So other than me, nyatum there is knowing Atati. Who else knows this Atma other than me? Who is saying this? Another is saying it. It has defined the Atma so far. Now he says, who else can know this Atma other than me? Why does he say that? Is it is is he is very proud of his knowledge? No. You remember, Rajkethas asked him before, teach me what you see, that you see. Because he said, teach me, don't tell me that you, you, the Vedas tell you. Tell me that you have seen it, you have observed it, you have realized it. So he is giving confirmation to him. I am the Guru for you. That is the literal meaning. What's the tattvartam for it? If Amadharma Raja has realized his true nature as Atma, that he is not this role of Amadharma Jiva, but he's doing a performance of the trapper of the Jivas from this world, he's performing a duty, but he is a liberated soul. And what it means is that if I can, I only can know it means only the Atma Jnani can know it. That means only the Atma can know the Atma. That means, Najaketas, you cannot know as a Jiva who you really are. You will know yourself by the grace of the Atma in you. So that's the Tattvartam. And you know, in, in Bhagavad Gita, in the Shri Darshanam, you see, Bhagavan says, I am this, I am that. And say, look, what is this egoistic statement? He's not saying that. He's saying when you understand the true nature of oneself, you are everything supreme. You are everything. Of course, he, he identifies the supreme nature. But that's all he aspires for. And he says, everything I, a true Sishya Arjuna will be able to say the same thing. I am that. But you have to be an Atvek Jnani. You must have been a liberated soul. So here he says, Devam Madanyo Jnanam Jnatum Arkati. So, let's see the next one. Asharidam Sarideshu Anavasteshu Avastidam Mahandam Atmanam Matva Dirona Shosati 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 Matva Dirona Shosati. Okay, he's giving you the benefit. It's again interesting. This is the this is the last mantra where he defines the Atma. Now he's coming to the next point because now he done the jiva. Now I realize, Nachiketan realizes, okay, I have a jiva bhavam. That means this body, mind, consciousness, body, mind, in intellect, complex, they call it, the my complex, whatever. This is the jiva. And there's an atma. 
Jiva is a reflected consciousness, conscious mind. So you have a duality. And it is a body. It is that. So he says, Asharidam Sarireshu. Sarireshu in this body, the Atma is Asariram. It is body. That's, again, it's a paradox question. In the body, Atma is bodiless. What does it mean? If it is in a body, it is there. It must have a body. Otherwise, how do we defend the boundaries of it? Means you cannot defend the boundary. You cannot say Atma is here, there. Because you say it's in the heart. But that is for the bhavana. Or to do upasana. Atma is everywhere. Asari Iram means it is not the brain, it's not the blood, it is not the mind. Because it's asangatvam. It's not attached to anything. You know, we saw in uh, Tattubhota many months back. So recall those things. See, Vedantam just brings back all those memories, you know. Panjakosha Vichar, Annamaya Kosha, Pranamaya Kosha, Manomaya Kosha. Think through that. So, I am Aditam, I am, I am transcend all this body. Stula, Sukshma, Karana, Sariram. I am beyond that. Anavastkeshu, Avastidam. So, I am eternal, not ephemeral. So, this body, it goes away. But I am not going anywhere because Anavastesh means uh, temporary, Nala Yatra, Yatra. So I am in that Avastidam. I, I exist. So it is undeniable. It doesn't die. Amritam. Mahantam. Mahantam means it is all pervading the greatest. We do with him. We boom means we do with him. All pervasive. Now, if you understand all this, and if you start worshipping the Atma, let's start with worshipping first. Upasana, glorifying of Atma. He is a dhira. That dhira, what does he do? Matva na shochiti. Show means shokam. That vira, that valor, that brilliant person, that courageous person, that valiant person who is able to identify himself or herself with the Atma, why is he called a valiant person? Because I am this body. I, I'm listening to all this Vedantic class and somebody on the way is saying, hey, look at this, this guy. Um, it's your name, okay? Krishna, Krishna is a bad guy. So Krishna is listening. All the Vedantam goes away. Somebody uses my name. He says he's a bad guy. So I am a bad guy. Or even a good thing. Oh, Lakshmi is a wonderful person. So Lakshmi's mind goes, oh, somebody is praising me. See, you have identity with a name and the form. So the Jeeva Bhavam is so tightly engaged. So you cannot give up that. I'm not saying if somebody calls you, hey, let me, you, you don't turn back. You must turn back. You perform it in the world. But when it comes to Radhadvesham, when you come to that which causes you anger and come across the Lopa Moha Madhamacharyans, if somebody is abusing you, you don't say it is for you. It is for this jiva, this body, this mind and its action, but they are not me. I have responsibility because I did a wrong thing, but that I is not me. I am not. Me. So this is the kind of, oh, so this, this constant battle that you do, this has to be practiced. How do you practice 
Atma Jnanam is it's not just book knowledge. It's not just sitting there and reciting the mantras, you know, memorizing it. And, no, it's, it doesn't help. You have to practice. When you when you get hurt, when the anger comes you comes to you, when when um, avarice comes to you, when humiliation comes to you, how do you take it? You take it as if it is hurting you. Then you have the abhimanam. It is hurting this my pride. No, it's not. It is, it is directed towards the actor in me who did the act. That may be wrong, sinful. It is getting me criticized. But I am an observer of this act. I am the director. I am the scriptwriter. I am inside. Now, that detachment, we need to bring it. But to do that, you have to be a vira. That's what he says. So that vira does not get showed. Okay. So far, so good. Now, the last two mantras, the Mother Muraja goes next step. Okay, I've told you all the magic of this. Now, this is your turn now. I've given you the answer. This answer is not a solution to a problem, but a means to dissolve the problem. Solution is solving it. Dissolving is destroying the problem. The problem is suspicion. Who am I? I cannot define that you are a jiva of this size. But I have dissolved that this question is irrelevant because the jiva bhavam is mithyatvam. Understand, solving is a yeah, temporary measure. Dissolving the problem is problem free space, abhayam. To do that, you have to really take some effort. So you say here, Naya matma pravachanena lapyaha na medhaya bhavuna shuthena yame vaishatrunate tena lapyaha the session, Atma, Vivdrunate, the noob swam. Na, I am Atma, Pravachanena, let me hear. Na, na, I am Atma, first line. Na means not. I am Atma, I am means this, I am Atma. This Atma means he's saying, hey, let's look at this. This Atma I'm talking about, Atma Jnanam, I'm going to tell you what cannot help you. And who is this guy in Achiketas? He's not a vagabond like you and me. He's a scholar. He has done Veda Adhyayanam, presentation, Shravanam, Mananam, he has done that. So when he was telling him what cannot help him, you don't start with kindergarten. You have to start with what he knows. He says, I am Atma, Pravashanena Lapyaha, Na Lapyaha. I am Atma, Pravashanena, Na, bring the Na here, Lapyaha. You cannot attain. Lapya means Lapam, obtain. You cannot obtain the Atma Jnanam, realization, by Pravachanam. I know where you, where you think. Hey, I, I read that your Upanishad, they say, Pravachanam, Adhyayanam must do. All the things says, you do all that. Now it says, you won't get the Atma Jnana. That's not the meaning. You must do Pravachanam. Here you must add that is not sufficient. It is necessary to do Pravachanam besides the Veda Mantras, but that is not sufficient. Because this is not something you, you obtain as a jnana palam outside you. Okay. What about I I remember all this? Na medhaya na labhyo. So by remembering Veda Mantras, Sutis, no. What about Bahuna Shothen. Shothen means just by repeated hearing. Bahuna means repeated hearing. 
big, very. What about I'm just, I'm not reciting it, I'm hearing. Somebody is saying, I go there and hear. No. So you must understand, all these are right thing to do. You may, you may study Vedas and recite and listen many times, but if you don't take an effort to assimilate and get nishta, you get nothing. That's the purpose of it. Here, Nachiketas is that level of student. Right? So don't undervalue Adhyayanam, Prabhachanam. We must do all that. Just because somebody has done Veda Adhyayanam for 30 years, as he mukta, no? Maybe a jnani. No? Jeevan mukta requires realization. It's been the same. So he said, all this we cannot do. Yame by Shrunade, Yam Eva. Vrunade means uh, uh, selective. Who is selected by who? By the Atma. Tena Labbya. The Atma selects to whom he should go. Asyaisha Atma. Vrunade Tanum Swam. Tanugum Swam. That's it. Tanum Swam. Tanum means Swayarupam. Atma is Vrunade. It elaborates. See, what he's saying is you can recite Vedas, you can listen to it, um, you can hear it, you can memorize it. All that is not going to lead you to realization of Atma. Atma expands itself, shows itself only to whom it chooses. What is the meaning of it? The meaning is Atma Jnanam is Ishwara Prasadam. I can try, I can go to all the ashram, I can go to all the gurus, I can listen here. I have to get Ishwara Prasadam. Who is Ishwara? Is this Lord Krishna, Narasimha, Ganesha? Anything can be. But that is the Atma in you. The Saguna Brahman can be anything. The Nirguna Brahman is the Atma in you. It has to choose you. I'm saying in, in, in a figurative way. There's no you, I, but I have, we have to be in duality right now. The Atma has to choose me to say, hey, and listening all this for what now? Mukshitran to know that. See, this is how the Vedanta always comes. It, 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 it makes it complicated to understand. Once you understand it, it's beautiful. The first two lines it said, you recite Vedas, you, you hear, you memorize it. Tough luck. Because Atma has to choose you to reveal itself. Now I understand that for it is the Ishwara Kripa, Atma Kripa, Atma's grace I need. Okay. So it is not in my hand, Atma's hand. But why should, or then should Atma give it to me that? Pravachanena, Medaya, Bhagunasukena, Karma Yogena, Bhakti Yogena, Upasena. So whatever you do, you have to really seek the true nature of yourself. That is Mumukshitram. Understand? 
Mukshidham is not liberated to go somewhere else. And also remember, liberation is not for Atma. Atma is not chained. But who is chained? Jiva is chained. How do you know that I'm, Jiva is chained? Because it doesn't know where it is going to be born. How is it going to grow? When is it going to die? But it makes fun. It makes money, it drinks, gallops, sings one day for a fat dom. It has no control. It means it is bound. So I, I am not the jeev. But then you are going to die, yes. But I am going to do the performance of death, performance of living. Everything is the performance. Therefore, I am free from the day I realize this. Because jiva is my Mithyatva role, it's the acting role on the stage of life. In reality, I am. And, and that's what I want to know. And for everything I do, I seek this. Therefore, what, what should be my prayer to God? God, give me to myself. Amadeva. Amadeya. Not I need a job, I need a house, and all this will come. Because if you ask for these things, now what is Nachiketas ask for? Ask for these things. And what did Yama offer him? Hey, you want the Chintamani? You want to be there? So when you seek this, everything else comes. But unfortunately, you would not like them. That is the trick of peaceful and independent living in this world. So this is what the import of this mantra. Let me see how much time I have. Okay, I can continue. I'm just rushing it. We'll cover it up in the next class to conclude it. Anyway. Now, the 24th mantra. So he's saying now, see this, this and the next mantra is where I think he's going to Give the sadhana stick. Na viradu du chetu charichat na sandu na sandu na samakita ka na shantamanusho vahati pragyane nai apyat apyat interesting. Now he's keep see double negative is using. Now he's warning in the pay. Hey, Ducheri Ducheri Dat. means Ducha means uh, evil, evil, evil task. Bad things. Abhiradha. Abhiradha means one who does not leave. Tucharitat avaridaha means one does not leave the bad path. Yenam, that means this atma, pragyanena na apniyat. It must, must be like this. If you are not leaving the bad way of living, this world, you will not be able to understand. So he's an instruction. Huh? So in the last mantra, Atma has to be graceful to me to know my true nature. For that, I must have the Atma's grace. Therefore, I must be a Mumukshu. Mumukshu means I must always seek Atma. Or you say in negative way, to do that, what you have to do, you have to live a dharmic life. And instead of saying, live a dharmic life, you're saying, if you don't live a dharmic life, you won't get it. You know, that's what you know, children say, Dad, can I go to the movie? If you don't pass the exam, you won't go to the movie. Because you, you ask for something, then he, he'll say, if you, if you don't pass. So that's kind of condition. He says, get out of the bad things. Then he says, Na shanto. 
सन्ना अशंतर शरीर से से ना शांत इसे ना शांतो ना समाज इधर इस देख ने अशांतो ने असमाह जीता है अशांतो शांतो means शांतम अशांतो means no शांतो no peace here the here Bhagwan Shankar says it Shantam and Samaki them is same, but Pashikara gives a slightly different meaning. Here yes, Shantam means your mind has to be at peace in your activities because you are not going to do bad things. And why do you do bad things? Because your mind is driving you. How does the mind go there? Because the Indriya's question. Hey, don't listen to this crap. Let's go and get out and play some golf. Right? Indriya is telling you that the nice uh, bhajis are somebody is making, smells nice. So if you are swayed by these Indriyas, you don't have Shanta. Shanta means focus. All the Indriyas are in control. Jitendriya. Dhamaha. That's what he's saying. So you have to be away from the bad things. And you have to control your indriya senses. Na as I'm saying, samakita asma na asmaakita asmaakita means egagra. Mind has to be focused. So now I'm not moving. My indriyams are I control, jitendriyam. Now my mind is focused. Now I put the mind into what I need to do. So they are very interconnected. I don't do bad things. And I don't do bad things. My indriyams are getting better. But I control my indriyams. And I control my indriyam. My mind is free. Now I put the mind into what I need to focus. So it's step by step. And when I do that, Santa Manasaka. So I become a tranquil mind. So he says, Na a Santa Manasaka Vapi. So you, if you don't have this kind of a, a thing, peaceful mind, you cannot get. You cannot get the Atma. So what, what is giving here? Begin the sadhanas. So now, I given the jnanam. Now it is your prayatram you need to do. Don't do bad things. Be righteous life. Control your indriyas. Now you may have questions. How do you control the indriyas? Potentially yoga sutra. You don't know that. You need to go back. So everything is interconnected. Focus. Agadram. When I focus, my mind is at peace. When my mind is at peace, I am able to pragnyanena apnya. Otherwise, you get na apnya. You will not achieve this. So it's a double negative to give positive reinforcement. So it's given a four sadhanas. Last one. Yasya brahma cha shatram cha upe. Bhavata Otanak Mrityur Shoba Sesenum Kaha Itta Veda Yatasa Veda Yatasa Interesting. Here this is amazing. What uh, he's concluding this chapter with this mantra. What he's saying here, Yasya Brahmacha. Yasya means which Atma? Yasya Atma is, is the question. That Atma which is to which Brahmacha Shatramcha Ube. Ube means it's a dual, those two. Who are the two? The Brahmana and Kshatriya, Parnashrama. You can take Brahmana, Kshatriya means 
by Shia Shudra, all those people. But you just take two examples. To, to which Atma, the Brahmana and Kshatriya, both Bhavata hai, Odana hai. Odana hai means, Odana means food, Anna. Bhavata hai, Bhavata means become. It means to which Atma all this Brahmana, Kshatriya become the food. That means the Atma eats those Brahmana and Kshatriya. What does it mean? It means Atma eats up everything else. Samharam, it does it. It consumes everything else. The ultimate consumer is what? Agni, right? Agni is Atma. Agni is there in the body. It consumes the body. Every, every time you eat the food, you consume the food, the food consumes you. Consumption is a process. Samharam. It becomes one. Mother is saying, hey, Najiket, what are you talking? You are a Brahmin? Because you do Vedas. There are a lot of Kshatriyas, there are Aishyas, there are Shudras, there are all called Jeevarasis. All of you, all of us, just Odhanaha. Just the food for the Atma. You are thinking, right? We always say death kills us. So Yama should be the one killing all this. So is he meaning Yama is Atma killing all this? That he cl clarified. Next line. Mrityur Syoba Seshanam Ka Itta Veda Gattasaha Ubaseshanam Ubaseshanam means Mrityuhu Mrityuhu means the Yamadharma Raja is, is pointing himself. Hey, this Yamadharma Raja, this Mrityu, what is he? Ubaseshanam Sa Atma. For that Atma, this Mrityu, you what? Ubaseshan. Ubaseshan means pickle. Literally pickle. It means pickle. So for the Atma, he eats. Brahmana, Kshatriya, and all the life forms. That means the Atma is a consumer of everything else. And who is this Yamadharma Raja? The Yamadharma Raja, the Lord of Death, is, we think, is just a pickle for the Atma to consume everything else. It's very poetic. You understand? It means if Lord of Death says that, that, hey, what does it mean? Nachiketas. I have no power of taking anybody. I am not this Jeeva Bhavam. I don't have a role. I am just the Atma. The Atma consumes everything else. You, that you see me as the consumer of everything else, I am just a little pickle that it uses me. You know, you touch the pickle, have a bit of a lick, and then you have the food like. Like that Yama comes into picture, the pickle also reduces, right? You eat pickle, just reduces. So the pickle finish, food is finished. So Yama will be finished one day. That's what he means. Because even I am mortal. My life may be long. But that's the quality of the t-shirt. So he is still, as you can this, look, I have attained this power of being the Lord of Death. Because unlike you, as you this, who asked a very profound question, yeah, but who am I? I didn't ask. I got elevated to the position of power. I'll be dead. I'll be gone. I'm already being used as a pickle. Don't forget this mantra. That means the ultimate consumer is Atma. The good news is that Atma is none other than myself. See, it's a frighteningly beautiful statement. It's not a flattery, it's a fact. So, this is to tell Nachike this just be brave. You are immortal, you are the Parabrahma. But you have a notional identity of yourself as Jiva. It's inevitable. If you hold on to this identity of Jiva, 
then you do have a path of survival and it's called a samsara. And that path gives you sukham, dukkham. That sukham and dukkham can be enjoyed in this world, the above world, or the below world. And you choose the travel mode, first class or low class, you can choose. The ticket that you secure depends on your papa and punya. But if you hold the ticket, you are boarding the train, goes up and down. Now, if you disown the ticket, what does it mean? That means I still do my duty, but I don't hold attachment to this, to the doership, or both the throne. I am free. What happened then? You choose. You, 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 you are you are ticketless traveler, you can go anywhere you like to go. You are free. But you will then realize you are not a jiva, you are jiva the ITM. Even Ishvara doesn't exist anymore. Jiva doesn't exist anymore. I am Parabrahman. I am Satsitsuram. So this is what. Now, all this is going to be further elaborated in chapter two. Oh, sorry, in uh, ch chapter two, two at least. We conclude the Pradama Jayam today. So I took, uh, I just rushed a little bit, but it's fine. I think you get the gist of it. So we'll have one more class. We have a summary of these two chapters. Um, then I think, depending on how we want to take it forward. We may continue to take this second chapter. It's two of this of 50 or so of us to take it up. So God bless you. So let me take the last one. Iti Kato Upanishad, Pradama Dhyaye, Iti Valli, Sampur Nakha. Om Shagana Bhavatu. Om Shagana Bhavatu. Shagana Bhavatu. Sakabijan <laughs> Om Shanti 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 Thank you, Raja. Thank you. Thank you, Raja. Thank, Thank you so much, Raja. Thank you. Take the class from there. But can we have from next week, Saturday, 10 o'clock?